This measurement matters way more than most people realise. Not just in terms of tyre performance and comfort, but also in terms of safety. Why? Because if you get everything wrong, you're playing a pretty risky game. However, get everything just right and you can make your bike much, much nicer to ride. Thankfully, you don't need to worry though, because in this video, I'm going to explain everything that you need to know about internal rim width and compatible tyres. Now then, before we get into this, it really is no joking matter. Now, I know that discussing the width of your rim might seem inappropriate to some people and something that most people would perhaps shy away from. But here in the cycling world, this is serious stuff and something I actively encourage. Because if you do use incompatible products, well, the worst possible outcome could be your tyres exploding off of the rims. So it goes without saying, even with all the information that I'm going to cover in this video, you should always check the exact recommendations from the manufacturer of the parts that you're using. Okay, so with that out of the way, why is this measurement something that we need to pay attention to? Well, hopefully by now, everyone has realized that generally speaking, bike tires are getting wider and wider. To accommodate those wider tires, well, you need wider wheel rims. Well, that wasn't actually too easy to say. Anyway, also, it's the same concept as using narrower tyres requires narrower rims. And hopefully, that's a pretty simple concept that we can all understand. However, the confusing part comes that we now have some common tyre widths which are not really optimised, compatible or suitable to be used with some wider modern rim widths. And then add into the mix that you could have a 30 millimetre tyre measure anywhere between a 28 and a 32, depending on what width rim it's fitted to. Well, it's at this point that we can start to see everything gets a little bit confusing. Manufacturers test this kind of stuff themselves, and then there's also independent testing done by the ETRTO, which is the European Tire and Rim Technical Organization. The goal here being to provide consumers with information on compatible setups, which is great, but there are still so many people who are not aware of this and the compatibility of what products or components they have. So, let me ask you a quick question. How many of you watching this right now actually know the internal rim width of your wheels? And you can let me know in the comments section down below and be honest. Now, in case there's any doubt, this is where you measure internal rim width. And then here on the outside is where you measure external rim width. Not too complicated to understand, but it's the internal measurement which is the important one with regards to compatible tyres. Now, if we go back a number of years, well, tyres were pretty skinny and understandably they used skinny rims as well. Say a 13 or 15 millimetre rim was pretty common. As tyres got wider to say a 23 or a 25 millimetre wide tyre, well, so did the rims. 17 and 19 became pretty common widths. And then as tyres carried on to get wider again, we had 28 and 30 millimeter tires start to become the norm and that was when we would see most manufacturers introduce a 21 millimeter rim and that's kind of still the fairly common setup that's used today but you see the tires and the widths of them are still getting pushed to the limits and that's where we've started to see 23 millimeter rims become quite popular but as our good friends over at the ETRTO have discussed and highlighted for most people 23 millimeter rims or any rim in general needs to be used with the correct width tire now in the instance of a 23 millimeter rim the ETRTO advise that you shouldn't use a tire that is narrower than a 28 millimeter wide or wider than 63 millimeters but let's face it I don't think we need to worry about 63 millimeter wide tires on road bikes. What this does mean though, is that tires which are 23, 25 or 26 millimeters wide, which is a pretty common size for most people, simply shouldn't be used on rims that are 23 millimeters wide. And this is the problem you see, because just so many people are unaware of that. And if your rims are even wider, say you've got some gravel wheels that are 25 millimeters wide, well, our boffins over at the ETRTO say that you can rule out any tires under 29 millimeters wide. But is this really such a big deal? 
Well, potentially, yes, because we could have people using incompatible products without even realizing it. You could be using wider rims than what your tires are designed for, or you could be using narrower tires than what the wheel rims are designed for, which is going to lead to increased stress on the tire bead, which is where the potential for your tires coming off of the wheel rims comes from. It also changes the tire shape ever so slightly, which is not exactly great for comfort, speed, puncture protection, or anything, to be honest. So what this means is you should just never, ever assume that whatever wheels and tires you have are always compatible. And you must always check with the manufacturer of the products that you have. And all of this is said before even adding hookless into the mix, which kind of adds another layer of complexity to this issue with regards to more limitations on tire pressures and also more limitations on compatible products. Now, hookless has been a bit of a hot subject right now in the world of cycling, and it is something that we've covered here on GCN Tech in the past. So right now, I'm not going to dive deep into that rabbit hole. If we step away from safety or compatibility and move across to the slightly more fun side of things, internal rim width and the compatible tires can be used as a way to tune and optimize your bike in terms of comfort and speed. Now, as I explained a minute ago, moving to a wider rim also does make your tire ever so slightly wider. But what we do need to be aware of is that tires are gonna measure true to size when fitted to the rim width that they were originally intended for. Now I've got a couple of examples here. So these are from our mates over at Pirelli and this 30 millimeter tire will measure 30 millimeters wide when it's fitted onto a 21 millimeter rim. Just as this big boy 32 millimeter tire will also measure 32 millimeters when fitted onto a 21 millimeter rim. Now, going narrower or wider on the rim width will impact the tire width as well. And as a general rule of thumb, for every one millimeter deviation away from the designed or intended rim width, the tire width is going to change by around 0.5 millimeters, and that's going to apply whether you go up or down, the tire width will change accordingly. Now, I've got a couple of different wheel examples here that I'm going to use to illustrate a lot of this stuff. I've got the latest Metron 45 RS from Vision and also the Metron SL from Vision. Now, these have different internal rim widths. The Metron SL has a 21 millimeter internal rim width and the newer RS has a 23 millimeter rim width. There's of course other differences too, like this rim is even wider externally. It's got a more optimized aerodynamic profile to it. It's got carbon spokes, it's got a new hub. It's even lighter, the list goes on and on. But in this video, mostly we want to be focused on the internal width because that's the key characteristic to understand. This is what a 26 millimeter tire looks like. This is what a 28 millimeter tire looks like. This is a 30 millimeter tire. And then finally, this is a 32 millimeter tire. Now, both of these are visible on the 21 millimeter rim and the 23 millimeter rim. Go wider or narrower and the differences will continue to grow. We can see that the wider rim makes the tire sidewall straighter rather than curved. And an extreme example shown as a cross section would look like this. The wider rim straightens out the tire sidewalls ever so slightly. Good for aerodynamics because it helps to reduce drag, but not so great for comfort or grip. The narrower rim will create a more curved sidewall. Great for allowing the tire to deform over bumps. Also great for grip, but bad for aerodynamics. The differences are small, but they are noticeable. In fact, a number of different changes also take place. The wider rim bed also increases the internal tire volume, so it requires a slightly lower tire pressure for the tire to behave in the same way and feel the same. This is why using physical measured tire width is crucial for getting accurate tire pressure recommendations. Pressure calculators like the one made by Silka rely on measured tire width to give accurate pressure recommendations rather than the number simply printed on the sidewall of the tire. Pirelli have also done some of the hard work here for you and have a pressure chart inside their box and guidance on how the pressure should be adjusted depending on rim width compared to the rim that the wheels are optimized for. A narrower rim needs a higher pressure and a wider rim requires less pressure. This 30 millimeter tire that's designed for a 21 millimeter rim requires four and a half PSI less on a 23 mil rim and four and a half PSI more on a 19 mil rim. The tire footprint with the road will also change marginally. 
A narrower tyre footprint will look something like this, and a wider tyre footprint will be slightly shorter and slightly wider. But we do have very similar contact surface areas, but these changes are very subtle. Now then, one thing I haven't really covered here is external rim width, and that's because it has no impact on tyre compatibility or how the tyre behaves, but it will impact aerodynamics and of course, wheel weight. Now you might think that modern wheels which are wider could perhaps be heavier, but the difference here is small enough that newer wheels and using newer manufacturing techniques, materials and tech can still mean a lower overall weight. Now using the example that I've got here, so this is a Metron 45 RS wheel, it has an ever so slightly wider 33 millimeter external rim width compared to this, the 45 SL, which has a 29 millimeter external rim width. Yet, even though this rim is wider, it's still about 100 grams heavier for a pair of the 45 RSs compared to the pair of 45 SLs. Now, Vision actually say that their newer, wider wheels with wider tires are more aerodynamically efficient than the narrower wheels with narrower 23 or 25 millimeter tires. Now, to be super clear, it's not much at all. It's in the realms of one watt saving at 48 kilometers an hour, but you also have the advantage of having more comfort from using those wider tires. Now, I mean, for the average rider, it's probably not really gonna revolutionize your riding or perhaps even be noticeable at all. But if you're racing and you're into marginal gains, well, it's only gonna be a good thing. And then these trends typically cross over into other wheels and brands too, but there will be a difference depending on how the overall rim shape has been designed. Now the link between inner rim width and tires does apply to the majority of wheels though. So this is information that all of us can then use to help us make informed choices on the tech, the products and the setup that we feel are important to us. So one thing we haven't spoken about yet is rolling resistance, which I know might come as a surprise to at least four of you because that is something that we love nerding out over here on GCN Tech. So I was gonna conduct a sort of homemade experiment here to test this using a set of bike rollers and a set of power meter pedals. But however, it might come as a surprise to most people that I decided not to do this because I thought it was a bad idea. You see, I'm anticipating that the difference between all of the different tire setups and rim widths is actually gonna be so small, it's gonna be within the realms of the accuracy of power meter pedals. You see, even the most accurate power meter out there only has an accuracy of plus or minus 1%. So if I was to ride at 250 watts, that's a range of about five watts difference that could be just down to power meter accuracy rather than the actual difference between the tire setups. So we can see it might not really be a test worth doing. However, I did what any respectable bike nerd would do and immediately jumped to my favorite website, bicyclerollingresistance.com. And it turns out, well, they've done a lot of the hard work for me and have conducted some slightly more accurate experiments. So what they did was to take three different 25 millimeter tires and then fit them onto three different widths of rims. You had an 18 mil rim, 22 mil rim, and then a big boy 26 millimeter rim. Now in their testing, when you had the tires at equal tire pressures, there was just 0.5 watts difference between all of the rim widths, which let's face it, is not really much at all. And then with the tire pressures adjusted for the difference in tire width compared to rim width, there was even less of a difference, just 0.23 watts. So what does this actually mean? Well, it means none of us should really worry too much about how much impact all of this stuff has on our tire rolling resistance. Unless of course, you're about to take on the UCI hour world record, in which case, do pay attention to it. So with all this in mind, what does it mean for us as everyday riders? Well, like most bike tech innovations, wider wheels offer incremental improvements across a bunch of different key areas. Now, if this is a big deal or not, really depends on your perspective and willingness to spend more money on your bike setup. Now, as a total nerd, I love talking about this stuff, but can totally appreciate it might not be for everyone which feels like a nice way to wrap up this video because hopefully by now we've all got a little bit more comfortable talking about the size of our rims in front of everybody else. But 
I am keen to hear your thoughts on this. What kind of setup do you use at home and what do you feel works best for you? So please do get involved in the comments section down below. And that is it. This video is done and dusted. Talking about rim widths and tires, it's enough for one day. Right, I'm out of here. See you later. Love you, bye.